So hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of AMC's Corner. How are you all doing out there? So uh, I've been riding my e-bike a lot lately. Uh, I've been exploring all these crazy areas. And one of the things I really like to explore is areas around the interstate highway system. And uh, the reason being is when they built the highways, uh, they took property by eminent domain, you know, paid for it, whatever, however it worked out. I'm sure that uh, the landowners were compensated where they made the highway run through an area. and Basically what would happen sometimes is there would be a, a neighborhood or a street that suddenly its access gets completely cut off and there's no way to, uh, to, to access the land. The land becomes landlocked by the highway. They're not going to build a tunnel or a bridge or whatnot just to get to some small area. And that's what we have right here. Uh, Interstate 495 is somewhere over in that direction. Uh, there's another road over in that direction that kind of blocks it and uh, there is this unbelievably beautiful little area full of these little uh, these little meadows this may have been a farm at one time uh, I believe maybe a chicken farm I can't really find anything in history of the area uh, I'm not going to disclose this location where so, it is uh, this is just some wild little spot that's in the middle of uh, in the middle of a pretty big area, a million people drive by this thing every year, this place every year, but because of a couple yards of brambles, no one knows this exists. And one of the cool things out here, and I don't know if there was an auto shop nearby, but they dumped a lot of car parts out here. Um, a, a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of service items and whatnot. Uh, water pumps, alternators, AC compressors, and, and yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll so see it anyway. In a here's a... Uh, now this is uh, this is really dense woods. This is really tough to walk around in. There are a lot of uh, a lot of things that'll catch your feet. So uh, I'm probably gonna fall on my face at least once or twice while filming this. But uh, that's okay. I'm not a very tall guy, so I don't have very far to get back up. So the first area here, whew, a lot of the gas tank and. Oh, what's this? Uh, review mirror. I'm not gonna go grabbing too hard. I don't want a lot of glass, but uh, all sorts of crazy stuff out here. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, and every time I come out here, I'll see something, and I'll go to get to it, and then I'll see more beyond it. That a, we got a hubcap. Uh, that's one thing I do notice out here is a whole lot of hubcaps. A whole lot of desirable hubcaps. <sighs> and some not as desirable. Wonder what that went to. Uh, if you guys know, leave it down in the comments. And hey, what do we have right beside it? An old GM head. A little small block Chevy. 350, 305 head. Just random, random, a lot of beer cans, a lot of trash. We got a big leaf spring. Big old leaf spring. Another gap, couple of gas tanks. Lots of tires. I oh, look more. More hubcaps. This place is a hubcap picker's dream. Is that Chrysler? No oh, Chrysler. Oil filters. Another leaf spring. I see valve springs. A lot of old, uh, a lot of old containers. What the, what we have here? <laughs> Charcoal starter. So I'm gonna guess this was probably mostly active sometime in the, the 80s, the early 80s. I have a, no pull tabs, but we're before, uh, it's hard to, before the deposit. There's no bottle deposit on any of these, it appears. So I would, I would say that dates this sometime around, you know, 83, 84. Exhaust pipe. Well, that's a hell of a fan, huh? Hell of a fan. Oh, is that a Rochester? No quadrajet. Yep. No car battery. No distributor. Distributor cap. Chevy, small block Chevy uh, valve cover. A lot of GM stuff out here. A lot and lot and lot of Chevys. Look at that old growler. That old bottle. Now, uh, 
most of what I'm looking at, you know, I say stuff from about the 80s. You got another carburetor right here. And a single barrel, two barrel. There's a single throat. Two, two butterflies. Where did that go to? And hey, what about this growler? Look at that. Undamaged. One gallon. Doesn't look too old to me. But uh, I'm not much of a much of a bottle aficionado. No fire extinguisher or anything in it. Doesn't feel like it. Of course not. Yeah. Well, every time I come out here, I find more and more stuff. <laughs> Turtle power! Turtle power, man! How about that? So, what was I saying? 83, 84, 85? That's about when the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were, uh, were making shoes for kids to wear. Huh. Oh, well, now I kind of backed myself into a little bit of a corner here. <clears throat> How am I going to get out? All right. Oh, another hubcap for you hubcap aficionados. What is that, Pontiac? What is that? That's an old emblem, I think. Pontiac. Boy, a lot of hubcaps. You know, that's how I know not a lot of people have come out here, because if a lot of people come out here, these would have all been scooped up. <sighs> yeah, it's tough, uh, tough getting around, ducking under all this stuff. I got a fender here. I got a fender. What do you think guys? What does that go to? I'm sure I do not know. So uh, come this way yet? Yeah, there's the gas tanks we came in at. Nope, oh, another hubcap. Who's counting the hubcaps? Who's counting caps? Cadillac logo maybe. That's the Cadillac logo in there. Pretty faded. Oh, we got the remains of an old wood stove. An old wood stove. The base of it right here looks like the sides of it. Right next to a pretty shitty oil filter. The more of that wood stove. And then next to it we got a uh, and a bunch of rocker, rocker arms. That battery charger, case a little battery charger. Another crazy fan. Is that an exhaust manifold I see right there? What's that, another? Oh, these are air cleaner covers. Another valve cover. In case anyone's wondering, yes, I do have a recent tetanus shot. Now, that's something we don't see anymore. Based to an old, an old jack, an old bumper jack. Oh, we got a, looks like a transmission cross member. You know, no whole cars, just uh, just a bunch of parts, a bunch of service items, a bunch of stuff that uh that a repair shop would have been would have been replacing and uh, the old what everything was cores nowadays would have just been would have been just been thrown away in a landfill nowadays all this stuff is recyclable I mean EGR valve it's definitely an EGR valve all right so and there's more it keeps going oh look another, another hubcap Maybe I can go around this uh, this thicket. I see something big over there. Ugh. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Did I mention it's real hard to get around through here? <clears throat> oh. I don't know if I'm gonna make it to that other hubcap. It's just, uh, although I do want to see what that big box over there is. So I got a trunk lid right there. I wonder what that's to. We'll get over there. <clears throat> oh, yep, we're gonna get to that hubcap. Maybe. Whew. Whew. Yep. Little Pontiac. Looks like an old refrigerator maybe over there. Tough to get to though. Losing my hat here. Things are ripping my hat off. Uh, probably get you guys closer than I can get. It looks like an old, uh, maybe an old commercial fridge or freezer unit. All right, so I think uh, crawl on the ground a little bit. Oh. One of the things I do for YouTube videos, huh? But then again, if this wasn't all a grown in thicket like this, none of this would be here. Uh, wow. Uh, all right. We come through. And there's another nice little meadowy area here. I see a bunch of stuff over here. Let's go check this pile out. I see a dashboard. That, uh, an old GM product, Cutlass maybe. Maybe a Cutlass dash. It's kind of what that looks like. Late 70s. Oop. Another EGR valve. I thought I saw a pull tab. Any badging on it, on the hood, on the trunk lid rather. I don't see anything. Oh, a gold mine under it. Cutlass Cruiser. It looks like it was the same dash as that, uh, same panel as that from that dash over there. Cutlass Cruiser. It kind of looks like it could be the Cutlass. We got an old box fan. Oh, we got some weird stuff right here too. What's this thing? What is this? Steering box? I see a steering shaft growing into that tree. What in the world is this? Oh, an old burner. An old, uh, an old burner for a house heater. That's what that is. Nozzle igniter. De fluid pump. A trim piece for that dash over there. Whew. Now what do we got a header? Header for a small block Chevy. Uh, I think she's uh, I think she's rusted out. Interesting. Oh look. <laughs> Your first iPhone. How funny is that? Bunch of trash. Looks like something picking through some trash. Alright, there's another pile over here. I for the auto parts, I believe I saved the best for last. Whew. It's hot. Kind of getting hot walking through these brambles. But yeah, look at this. Dun, 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 dun. The most complete of any motor I've ever found out in the woods. And it happens to be an air-cooled Volkswagen. Older swing axles, transmission still there. They got a 
cold motorcycle gas tank. It's actually bolted to it. What the heck am I looking at? Why would you bolt? What in the world is this? What? Uh. What is the deal with that? You guys got a little, uh, a little dirt on you. What is the deal with that? I mean, very complete little little motor here. Carb's still on it. Distributor's still on it. Generator's still mostly there. But I am flummoxed as to why you would mount. And that's mounted. That's not just set on there. I thought that someone set that on there as kind of a joke, but they actually bolted that tank. Was this some sort of like toy, like thing that kids played with out here, running around with like a go-kart chassis on the front of it or something? Or maybe some homemade doom buggy? Boy, that's all that's here of it. This big old bumper. Like, oh, I don't know what that's to. Product maybe who knows? Oh, it's that little Weber grill, little valve cover. That's kind of neat, little four bang or something. But I just, I just can't get over why, why you would have a fuel tank attached to that. That's uh, that's pretty interesting. Oh, we got a usable perfectly fine tail light here it's for the license plate side I wonder if this was for a motorcycle a lot of tail lights for bikes will have that clear there so the running light also doubles as a plate light I bet you there's someone out there that would love to have that and uh, here's some pretty cool stuff look at this I actually came out here yesterday and found all of this. I uh, actually got a picture of these. Look at that. Two really nice Chevy truck hubcaps and then a GMC hubcap. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if, uh, if the rest of the set of hubcaps is still kicking around in here. Hmm. Oh, what's this? Plushman's Mustard, that's a company no longer in business. Uh, what kind of interest me? What is this? They're like a kid's sled or something? An old sled. I'm not gonna rip into that too hard. Pans and pans and cans and oh dams. Well, alright guys. I think that's about it for this little area. Now there is uh, there is another dump site a little bit through the woods. I'm gonna take a little bit of a walk and uh, I'm gonna grab the e-bike. We're gonna go in another way. And uh, this other dump site from as far as I can tell we're gonna go visit is from the latest it was from is maybe the 30s. I had picked through it a little bit. Someone else had dug up some stuff there and uh, stuff on you. The, uh, the latest stuff I found in there was from like the 30s and stuff going back from there so let me uh, extricate myself back to the bike and uh, yeah, we'll go over there. Well, all right, uh, I'm here at another area. This isn't a very big spot. Uh, that field where we saw all those car parts is actually over there. And uh, if you guys listen for a second off in that direction, you can actually hear 495 just, uh, just over that tiny little hill right there. So a totally landlocked area, but uh, this here, is probably the most interesting find. I mean, old car parts are one thing, but this spot here is a dump site. And the earliest thing I found here, uh, and someone's actually, if you can see the yellow shovel handle, someone's actually done some digging in here. Uh, there's a bunch of bottles up here. Uh, Haverhill, Massachusetts is the shoe city. You're always gonna find shoe stuff. But a uh, lot of old bottles. Lightning, something lightning. 
O-I-G-H-T-N-I-N-G. -I, I can't read it. Trademark lightning, whatever that means. Uh, but yeah, a lot of old glass bottles here. And the oldest thing I found here was some skin cream. Um, of all things, I believe it was a, a tin tube in this hole. Um, this was this is two years ago was the last time I was here and that's when whoever dug this out dug this out and they had over in one of these areas uh, a, a tin tube might even have been a lead tube uh, something like that right there well, what's this that's pretty cool something there something very similar to that and it had a skin cream that hasn't been produced since uh, Hasn't been produced since the 1930s, just before World War II, the company that had the skin cream went out of business. So that gave me a pretty comfortable date of the 30s for some of this. And it looks like this has been a dump site for a very long time. Uh, we got a lot of, lot of metal stuff, a lot of cool stuff we're going to go take a quick look at before my battery dies. But uh, out of all the areas I find, this here probably has the most treasures that are worth the most money. Yeah, that cool cool old beauty product stuff uh yeah this has the the most treasures uh for anybody who collects bottles or or likes that sort of thing they're uh some of the oldest bottles i've ever found of were whoever dug this out someone put in a lot of time digging it but uh yeah so and there's all this stuff so this deep hole would have been from the who knows Early, late 1800s, early 1900s, maybe even 18, early 1800s, uh, if you dig deep enough in that area. And then there's all of this stuff here, which I'm going to guess by what I see is probably dates this, this top layer here sometime around the 50s and 60s. Um, look at this old typewriter. Or is that a, not a typewriter, you know what that is? This is a point of sale machine, that's a cash register. I bet you that's a cash register right there. Big heavy old thing. That's the first time I've ever found one of those. Some belt drive something. Uh, yeah, so like I was saying, I'm thinking this is probably a dump pile from the 50s and 60s. I'm seeing a lot of these washing machines. I think one of these, this one may have had a gasoline powered Maytag engine powering it. Any of you guys know it's got the gearbox with the drive shaft that goes down through the feet and the motor would have been underneath this one here is similar but it has a big old electric motor in it there's the pump how cool is that I bet you there are people that restore these things would love to have some of those parts but uh, yeah I think uh, I'm thinking this is probably from the 50s maybe the 60s this would have been dumped this stuff dumped out here Big uh, water heaters, water boilers, and how cool is this? An old farm light, like an old barn light. Now, a lot of really strange things. Some sort of electrical device, radio or something. Open some tubes. Yeah, definitely a radio. But uh, why I think this is the remains of an old chicken farm is that right there. You tell me that that's not a chicken plucker. You've never seen a chicken plucker if you don't think that's a chicken plucker. And that right there would have been something that, you know, the normal kind of household, even if you had a couple of chickens, you're not going to invest the money into a commercial mechanical chicken plucker. You're just going to pluck your birds yourself, boil them and pluck them. But my guess is... When the highway was made, all those meadows we saw were a farm. And uh, and when the, when the highway was built, maybe a little before, they dumped everything out. Look at this old ball jar. How cool is that? Let's look at the, the lid on it. Ideal ball. I wonder if that can date. Anybody can date that. So, yeah, I see like a chicken feeder. That would be a chicken feeder right there. More, more of the... More lights. And I think my, that might have been part of the uh, part of the plucker there, maybe. But uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of history. Uh, a couple of answers, but a lot more questions. Oh, we got another 
Another washing machine over here. All right, there's just a clothes dryer. Now it's a home to home to varmints. Now we got another another old tube radio. Looks like right here. A lot of cool stuff. A lot of cool stuff. Sometimes you just gotta look. You just gotta look for the back way into some areas and uh, find stuff that no one's really found and not a lot of people have found before. There's some barbed wire. Roll the barbed wire. And it just amazes me how nothing more than a couple yards of brambles can leave an area like this pretty much like a time capsule. That's what I see all of this at. Even the 70s or 80s, 60s, 70s car parts. It's just like a big time capsule. And this one here between what's here, what's going to be buried under here, what's buried in over there. You know, this is, this is some place that if, uh, if you can get permission to excavate, I bet you, you would, you'd walk away with a lot of really cool bottles, a lot of really cool historical stuff that you just can't find nowadays. Like a chicken plucker. I mean, how many people have gone in the woods of Massachusetts and found a chicken plucker? I, I, I gotta be, I just like saying chicken plucker, chicken plucker, 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 ah, ah, ah. anyways, yeah, that's still got the agitator in it, that washing machine, I mean, maybe that one was electric too, I see that same drive unit, but even so, would have been neat to find a Maytag motor, who knows, maybe there's a Maytag motor hiding under there, well, all right, guys, my battery, it's cold as all get out out here, it's, uh, it's pretty chilly, and these camera batteries, man, they just don't like the cold. I do like the hat, though. All right, guys, I'm going to relax a little bit. I'm going to poke around this area. It's hard to get out here, a little tough to get out here, and uh, I'm going to see if I can find any new stuff. If I do, I'll turn the camera back on. But on that note, guys, and until next time, thanks for watching, and keep it out of the cabbage.